once you once you generated the leads, mm -hmm. you followed up with the leads, okay, and now they're about to go through the sales process. For us, it's like once the virtual assistant generates a lead and then the lead manager uh, qualifies it as an acquisition appointment and she sets the acquisition appointment, we start the, the sales process. <music>beginning is intro and bonding which is like introducing yourself letting them know who you are bond with them a little bit try to get them to smile in the first like five to 15 seconds like say a little joke or whatever right get your this is your swag nobody can nobody can teach you this this is something this is your own swag you got to be your own person you know what i mean as you're introducing yourself just similar to as if you were going to you know if you were out at a party or something or out at the club or whatever wherever you're at introducing yourself to a girl or a new homie or whatever the case is, right? Be yourself. The second thing is rapport. So a lot of people will think that rapport is actually bonding, which it's not. Rapport is figuring out the situation. So this is like, hey, give me the rundown of what's going on with the property. So here we intro. Hey, this is Mike. You talked to my assistant about selling some property on da da da. I make them laugh somehow. Then I get into rapport right away. I say, yeah, could you just give me the rundown of like what's going on with the situation? And I leave it very open. The goal here is for you to listen 70% and only talk 30. So you're just information gathering. You're figuring out everything. Oh, yeah, I actually have bad tenants who um, haven't paid in like three months. Right. And I start digging into that. Well, have you started the eviction process? They're like all that stuff. I'm, I'm probing. I'm figuring out the whole situation. Have you listed it with a realtor yet? Like, what has the process been like so far? I'm asking all these probing questions and I'm figuring out the whole entire situation. Now for number three, as I'm listening during my rapport phase, I'm figuring out their pain. Okay. They told me that, you know, they have these tenants that haven't paid. They're in the hole, like 20,000 bucks. They can't pay the mortgage anymore. The house is about to get foreclosed on here in like, you know, 60 days. Okay. I'm figuring out all these things. And in the third step, I'm kind of just telling them, telling it, it back to them and pretty much just getting them to say how it makes them feel. You know, you know what I mean? So I'm saying something like, dang, you have these tenants that are, that I haven't been paying for like a year now. Your house is about to get foreclosed on. You planned on just ha and ha on having this thing for a while, but now you're like, what the heck? How are you holding up? Asking something like that. And they're like, dang. Now they're like really digging into it. They're like, like, I'm in a bad situation, man. It's like, I just want this property off my hands. And now they're getting solidified that like, hey, I need to get the hell out of the situation. So that's what getting them. To, so this is like getting them to really feel their pain. This, now the budget step is you're figuring out Two things. You're figuring out what they need, cash in their pocket, not what they want for the property. So not like, hey, I want $200,000 for my property. No, no, no. Let's talk about how much cash you need in your pocket. Okay, there's a difference. If you have a $100,000 mortgage and you want to sell the property for two hundred, you want $100,000. Okay, <laughs> you see what I mean? It's different because people will talk about a house, like a physical thing, different than they talk about the cash that is actually going in their pocket. So the cash that is going in their pocket, that's a little bit more personal. Oh, dang. I mean, I am going to walk away with like a hundred grand. So you need a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Why? And you don't ask them directly, like, why do you need the hundred grand? But you're, you, instead of just asking them, okay, Justin, I know you said you want a hundred grand in your pocket after you pay off the mortgage and stuff. Why do you need that? You're going to be like, bro, that ain't your business, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you got to ask, it's, it's not what you ask, it's how you ask it, right? So you got to ask them like, hey, what are the plans? Let's, you know, we have closed this thing up. And then they start telling you, oh, well, I don't know. I just need, I want to put some money in the bank. And I just, you see what I mean? Now you figure out that, you know, there's some wiggle room in that $100,000. Or they say something like, I need $100,000 because I have a $90,000 credit card payment. or You know what I mean? And then you start getting the reason why they actually need the need the money. Now we're into decision. Now we're figuring out 
what is going to justify them making a decision? If you were to paint the picture here, what, what problems are solved? What's going to justify us closing this deal up? Not only what is going to justify, but who is going to justify. So this is what, and this is who. So what's going to justify you making a decision, okay? And then who is going to help you justify making this decision? So do you have to go talk to your, um, your spouse? Do you have to go talk to your brother, or your partner, or whatever about this deal? Once we have all this wrapped up, we pretty much have all the information that we need. Now we wrap it all up in fulfillment and we paint the picture of their problem getting solved. And then we say, hey, if we could do this, is this something that you wanna move forward? So Justin, bro, you have these tenants that haven't been paying for a year. They owe you 20,000 bucks. The property is about to get foreclosed on right? And you're like, bro, you're about to like get out of real estate. You're pretty much done with real estate. What, what if we could just take care of this thing for you, right? What if somebody came in, took care of the tenants, that way you didn't have to evict them, actually reimbursed you for all the money that, you know, these tenants owe you and got this thing off your hands in like 30 days. And then you just shut up and you let them tell you, oh yeah, like freaking, yeah, let's go. And you start getting them on board with selling their house. Now you come over here and this is the biggest thing in this step is urgency. So you set the expectations of what's going to happen next. You never want to be the bad guy in a situation. So a lot of people will be right here and they'll just be like, okay, cool. Well, we can get you a hundred thousand dollars for your property. We can get you $200,000 for your property. And then they're like, the seller's like, ah, now nah, can you do, you know, 225? Uh, I don't know. How about we meet? And then they start like live negotiate, right? We never want to be live negotiating. We want to put ourselves on the side of the seller. So me and the seller are right here working on this deal together. You see what I mean? As we're working on this deal together, I have to go back to the bad people and get the bad news or the good news. That way, I'm not the bad guy. So I set the expectations of, of what's going to happen, happen next. And I let them know. I say, hey, Justin, um, I think we're going to be able to get something done for you here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my lender or go back to my boss or go back to my business partner or whatever, the, whatever it is. I'm going to give them the rundown of every single thing that we just went over. And I'm going to go to bat for you, bro. I'm going to see exactly what we can get done for you. Um, I know you need this 200 grand to pay off all the things that you need to pay off. I'm going to try my absolute hardest. Okay. If I go back to the team and get this thing done, is it something that you want to move forward with today? And here's where the urgency comes in. The only reason why I ask is because we buy about two or three properties a week. And we only have a certain amount of funds for those properties. Okay. And every single time we come to an agreement with a seller, we take those funds and we set them aside and it, those funds cannot be used for anybody else's house. So that's the, that's, that's the reason why. So I just want to make sure if this is something you want to move forward with, I want to make sure that your funds are set aside so they don't go anywhere else. That way you're taken care of. And if we can come to an agreement today, we can do that for you. But I just got to let my guys know because they're looking at multiple deals every single day. And he's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, if, you, if we can come to an agreement, let's get this thing done. So I'm like, okay, cool. Here, if I'm on the phone with them, I'll put them on pause, okay? Or, or hold, right? I'll put them on hold, go back, talk to my team, and then come back into the call. Or if I'm on an onsite appointment, because I'm doing the same exact thing when I'm on site. I say, hey, I got to go back to my car, talk to my peoples. I'm going to send them over these pictures and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to come back in here in the next like 15, 20 minutes and we're going to get you an offer. Mm -hmm. And then you come back in and you give them the offer. And you say something like, you know, Justin, I, I'm actually surprised. Like this is a higher offer that I actually was expecting. I was actually kind of expecting not even to get an offer because of all the deals that we were buying this week. But luckily, like your, your property got approved for our portfolio. Good news is I came back. We can close on this thing in 30 days. I really wasn't even expecting to, to get this offer the way that we got it. It came up a little bit higher. We're at 175000 bucks, And then you just shut up. 
literally, you just are completely silent. Because you let the dog go in there. It's not what I want, but I don't want to be rude. It's really, it's really concerning. And you're just calm, cool, and collective, bro. Like, you're not like, well, oh. You let them be. If they're silent for 30 seconds, you let them sit there and thought, bro. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and you let them think. And then and then finally they start, uh, I don't know. Okay. Still, still silent. Still silent. Can you get that? Can you get them to come up to like 185? I'm gonna try. I can try. I can't make any promises. I can't go back to them many times. I'll try. They pretty much gave me 175 as like the solidified offer. But sometimes we can kind of pull some strings. Maybe I'll take take a cut out of my commission or something like that in order to get the thing done. But I can't go back to them a couple more times. I only can go back to them one more time. So. If I go back to them at 185, is this something that you're ready to move forward with? If I can get that approved, then you do repeat the process. Come back in at 180. You stick to your guns and you're like, okay, be okay. This is the biggest thing about closing. Be okay with walking away from a deal. Like that's it. I had I had a deal, I have a fix and flip going on right now, right? Yeah. Lady came to me, it was a, a realtor. After I gave an offer like of two weeks, she didn't even entertain my offer. Then finally she had no buyers came back to me and said, hey, Mike, we're actually willing to entertain your offer. Can you come by and check out the property? Gave her an offer of 205. She came back to me and was like, hey, we, we want to get this thing done at 215. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, my, my, my offer is at 205. That's it. I literally said this. I'm like, we literally just got two contracts today. Yeah. So I know this property is right down the street and I'd love to do the deal, but we really don't need the deal. She's like, all right, I'm going to shop it out for the rest of the weekend. This is on. She finally came back an hour later and said, all right, my sellers want to do 205. Let's get this thing rock and roll. Right, so this is, this is negotiating, bro. This is non-live negotiating. You go back and forth, and then finally you guys land a deal. Boom, you close it, and you let them know the next steps of what's going to happen. Hey, my transaction coordinator is going to be in touch with you. We're going to run title. We're going to do all the things. On all my contracts, what I'll put is earnest money to not be due until 24 hours after the inspection period is expired. And then what I do is I have my buyer pay the EMD. So a lot of contracts make you bind the offer right away within 24 hours of you getting an agreement. And then in that case, you're probably gonna have to come up with the EMD. But if you put in the additional terms or somewhere in the contract that that, that EMD is not due until the inspection period expires, then that gives you, you know, maybe you have an inspection period of 21 days or 10 days or whatever it is. That gives you time to go find your buyer. You find your buyer and you have your buyer pay the EMD.